What was the 70s like in Kathmandu? Well, you know, the, you had many shops that, uh, uh, my friend had a shop called the Golden Pagoda. Zafar had that. Of course, there was Didi Lama and uh, Sharma. And then there was uh, also Rana and his wife. They had the cabin restaurant. And then uh, Sulu Chan and Curry opened up the Yin and Yang restaurant. And so, the, and my my girl Ted's wife, they opened up the first disco in 1971, the Rose Mushroom, you know. And uh, so there was a, that scene. It was just peace and love. I used to go to the to that one temple at the end of uh, at the end of a uh, uh, new road with the steps, the beautiful temple there. I used to sit there and smoke and turn the girls on and pick up hippie girls. <laughs> I'll tell you, I picked up a hippie girl there once. She was from she was from uh, 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 Laguna, so she 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 was in Laguna. So I I gave I used to I had a house I would rent to girls, so I always had girls around. You know, so she she came and stayed in my house, and so I I'm, those days I had a Russian jeep, so I used to take girls to uh, Tatopani. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'd have food. I have a tent, and we, you know, we hang out, smoke, and everything. And so she, I brought her to Tatopani, and she was beautiful girl, beautiful body, young, nineteen, twenty years old, and and just wonderful looking. I mean, so she got. I I brought all my Nepali guys with me who worked with me, and so we went to Tatopani, and she got stripped down to a bikini. These guys had never seen anything like that. You know what I mean? And she said to me. You know, in America, if I was in Laguna in the sun, I'd just be all nude. I don't have anything to worry about. I said, "Look, you're in Nepal. If you do, nobody does like that here in Nepal." I said, "But don't let it be me to stop." You. So she got nude there. Oh, those guys' uh, uh, eyes were popping out of their heads, man. Right? So she walk over to, she wanted to go take a bath in the Tatopani with, you know. And, and when the women saw her, they stoned her. They got stones. They were going to kill her. They were, and they had the police came. Man, it was a bad scene. I mean, when she did that, I couldn't have her in my house anymore because she's too <laughs> fucking crazy. You know what I mean? She was too crazy. But I used to go there and pick up girls, man. I picked up some freaks there, dude. Oh my god! I had one. I had one uh, a friend of mine. They came, and so I took him to Dakin Kali Temple, mm -hmm. and uh, they were doing the puja, the, the, the Dakin Kali time. They're just killing, you know, animals for sacrifice. So we're there, we're smoking, and I had this one friend of mine, and we, he was the Bodha yogi. And he was a yogi, he did the yogic practice where he made himself lighter than air. You know, he could levitate. So, You've seen that? Yeah, I, so I've seen a lot of crazy things, but that I saw. And so we're there all getting high, everybody getting high, so he goes and shows his routine. He put, he did a, a one's yoga position, put his arms, his, like that, did an about turn. Now he's, he's holding on his feet. He took one feet away. He took one finger, two finger, three finger, four finger. Now he's floating there. Blew those Westerners' minds. Right? So I said to him, I said, look, oh, everybody is high enough here. Let's get in my Russian Jeep, go back to Boda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they still talk about it. One time I, I had a girlfriend. I was doing a lot of Buddhist retreats, and I had a girlfriend. She was a gorgeous uh, actress, and she was dying of cancer. So she was just melting away. So all her friends came to me, Joe, you have to go back to, to make a prayer for her at Boda, do the, do the long life puja, you know which I've had done for me. Maybe I'll never die. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> who knows, you know? I haven't died yet. <laughs> the, That's anyway, probably why you got lucky. Oh, so yeah. Times. I had, oh. Anyway, so I do. The, I did this long life puja. I had all the monasteries, Kopan, all the monasteries, all the monasteries doing this prayer. And I had a picture in front of the monastery, in front of the uh, 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 one little temple of the people who started the stupa. And they had the people there with the chanting and the bells and the whole time. It was the first day that the, the Chinese government allowed Tibetans to leave to go to India for a Kala Chakra initiation. 
Same day. And so there were so many different kinds of Tibetans and wild people never seen, you know, a car. You know what I mean? Never, you know what I mean? And so I did the puja and I call up, I call up New York. I said, I said, I did this ceremony, you know, it, it ended about one, one fifteen, something like that. He says, What time what time? What time? What time? I said, about one o'clock, one fifteen. She says, Joan was dead, clinically dead. We were all crying and everything. And she came back to life. <laughs> At the exact same time. Exact same time. And and she lived about six months, but she was still having the cancer. She was alive. Her brain was alive, but she was melting away. In the end, they had to send somebody there and let tell her to go, let go. Finally, she let go and she died. But she lived six months and she she got to see the pictures I took in Boda of uh, that puja, which are which is in my book. Which I didn't bring that book. I didn't have, but I have this book, which is my most important book. That book is like Nepali history. So, one time, I'm sitting in the stupa, smoking to God and and with the Bodhna Sadhu, that same guy, and these two Westerners come. They're all Western dress, you know. Thousand dollar cowboy boots, Rolexes, beautiful everything, Western dress, wife dress of the night. Then they come up to me and they say, "What are you doing here?" I said, "Well, I'm smoking to God." You know, every day I used to smoke with the Bodhna Sadhu. I would go have a uh, 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 lunch or tea with the Chini Lama, and and that was my routine. So that day I'm sitting there. He says, "Well, what do you do here?" I said, "Well, you know, I'm you know." Studying yoga and studying Buddhism. He says, what is your friend? I said, he's the big yoga teacher. He says, well, let me see what yoga he can do. So this guy, he had breathing techniques, you know. So he went, om. And when he, he went, om, you, you, it came like if it came from his stomach, the sound. You know that was unbelievable. They didn't understand it. The next thing they say, well, can, they, can he do something else? Like we were supposed to perform for him. So, like I said, I always used to have lunch in the Annapurna because they had like a 10-course lunch for 100, 150 rupees. So, soup, salad, dessert, everything. And so, that day I went to, to uh, oh, no, he said, the, the guy says, oh, you, you smoke a lot of that stuff. I says, yeah. He says, what are you going to do when you go to America and you can't get so easily that stuff? I said, if that happens to me, I'll just jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Right, so they walked away. So I'm going to the Annapurna Hotel for lunch. So when I went to the Annapurna Hotel, everybody knew me because I'm paying everybody. They oh, what well, you you want to? They start playing my music and everybody's paying attention to me and all this kind of stuff. And there over there is those two Texas billionaires, and they're watching me. Wow, who is this guy? You know what I mean? And so, you know, because I had them play my muse. I was like Rick at Rick's Cafe, dude. Except it was Joe at the Annapurna. <laughs> and so uh, uh, another thing I saw in Nepal was that this Malaysian family came to Boda. And so apparently when I went there, I was sitting there having tea and uh, uh, with the Chini Lama. These people come in. And they say something, and everybody hits the floor and starts to pray. I didn't understand <clears throat> what was going on, you know, because everybody's crying and praying and, you know, crazy stuff. And so I never saw that before. So after they, I, they left, I had to find out what was going on. That the daughter, the younger, the Muslim family's daughter, from the day she was born and could talk, she said, my father, you're, I have my, another father, my real father, he lives in Boda, and, and he lives in Nepal in the high mountains. He lives in the high mountains, right? Not Nepal, in the high mountains. And he, he's, he has a temple there, and I need to go see my father, right? They show up in Boda. When they showed up, she knew the name. The Chini Lama had a daughter 
who they, she has, there's a stairway that you go up to get to his room. She had fallen down that stairs and had broken her neck and died. That was always a sad thing, right? When she came, she said her name, Father, your daughter's come home. Oh, you say that, that happened in a Buddhist family. They've, you know what I mean? It, it, it was a very sacred thing that happened. So I actually saw a reincarnation right there. Boom, boom, boom. How can you explain that? You know, let's talk about the old days in Kathmandu. Well, you know, the, the Kathmandu was open. You know, you can smoke as much as you want, party as much as you want. There was no drugs here, hard drugs. There was no opium dens, no such thing as a Nepalese heroin addict, nothing like that. And it was a happy place. Everybody's smiling, everybody happy. We were spending dollars. It was a good thing. We were bringing support to the town. Everybody loved us, man. They, you know, the, I don't know how many times people offer you, come to my house, have some food. Come to your house, have some food. You know, it was a very loving, loving place.